dresser for free. I'm going to show you how to use an inlay and what not to do and what to do. Let's get started. This was a sideboard to begin with. It's got these weird grooves. I am going to tape them up and mix up some Bondo. This is a hardening cream. You have to mix it with a little bit of the hardener. Wear gloves and a mask. You can sand it when it's dry, but it's super smelly. Bondo is also really great for deep gashes when you just can't sand them all out or filling things like this. Be sure to spread it really thin and scrape up the excess. Time to remove the hardware, keep it in a Ziploc bag so you don't use the screws. I speak from experience. Be sure to clean your furniture before you sand. If you skip this step, you run the risk of pushing dirt further into the wood. I'm using a mixture of humble suds. I'll leave a link below. I love this all natural cleaner. Finally, ready to sand. There are some deep scratches in this and I wanna get that veneer smooth. So I'm starting with a 120 grit and I will finish with a 320 grit. When you're working with power tools, it's really important to protect your ears, your lungs, and your eyes. It's time to sand the top. It was in pretty bad shape. There was a lot of deep gashes and the veneer was in pretty bad shape, but I was able to get all of that off and make a really nice finish. One more good wipe down and I will be ready to paint. First thing I want to do, always forget. So I'm saying it here so you guys will remember too. It really helps to just paint the inside where the drawers because they, they are flush with it. So you will see just a little bit of this wood if you don't paint that. So I'm gonna do that first and get this over with. Painting the inside of the frame first ensures that you will not forget when you put your drawers back in. It saves a lot of time when you're ready to be done with the project. Got a base coat on here. Here. Now I'm going to finish painting the drawers. I thought for a moment maybe just staining the drawers, but I would have to go back and fully sand off this veneer and it's just not in great shape in a lot of places. I'm gonna have to do, I'll probably do a mold here because this is damaged and I don't want to go to the trouble of finding a furniture repair to put another lock in there. I have something for that and then we're going to do some blending and a paint inlay from IOD. DIY paint is naturally thick. I always spray my surface with water. I'm doing one thin coat of the crinoline. It'll spread really nicely. Okay, bad news. You probably can't see it real well in this light, but I should have known better. There is beginning to be a lot of bleed through. You can see some of that kind of peachy color there and all through here. This piece looks like it was probably manufactured in the in sometime like in the 1920s. And these pieces, I don't know why this era, but the whatever stain they use is notorious for bleed through. My dog is gonna help us out here. So I'm going to go over that with a coat of Salvation Solution. Probably I should have done that to begin with. So this is a DIY paint stain blocker. It is not all natural. It has a strong smell because you have to block an oil-based stain leak through, bleed through, which is exactly what this is, with an oil-based product. You can use shellac primer. Water-based primer will not stop this. This is the downside to really well-made, beautiful, but old furniture is you might run into these problems. So I'm gonna open this up and do one thin coat of this. Salvation solution comes in clear and white. I usually just use the clear because I like to distress after and don't want to see white. It goes on like a thick top coat. Time for my favorite part, blending DIY paint. No latex or acrylic makes it so easy to blend. I'm going over again with one thin coat of crinoline and outlining with apothecary. Using my water bottle, I go over both sides and I use a neutral brush, meaning one that doesn't have any paint on it. I spray those bristles too and I lightly go over where both colors meet. I keep off loading any paint that's on that neutral brush and you can see how soft it gets. You you can experiment with blending all kinds of colors. I find it to be so fun and because you can reactivate DIY paint, you don't have to worry about it drying on you when you're in the middle of blending. Time to use Summer Villa IOD paint inlay. The inlays are actually paint that you embed into your wet paint. You want to line them up and then spray it with some water, go over it again with a damp cloth, allow it to dry thoroughly, then you peel it off. 
This is how it looks with the whole scene. Looking back, I did make some mistakes. I should have probably laid my dresser flat. I should have trimmed the edges and make sure there are no wrinkles. This is a beautiful inlay, but I am kind of a wing it person and I don't always practice first, but you'll see the end result I think is gorgeous. It's totally dry. I'm ready to take this off. Now the awesome thing is I can use this inlay at least two more times. I just did one on a little tray and it's like fully inked up still so I can do at least a couple more projects with it. So here we go. We're gonna mist it and I'm gonna get the whole thing. And I can see a few other spots that I'm gonna probably have to touch up so we'll just have to figure that out as I go. Learning as we go. You know what? I've been doing furniture for 20 plus years and I still learn new things. And you would think I would learn the whole thing about bleed through by now, but sometimes you just get a bleeder that's so bad it just takes multiple times. But the dresser was free to me. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna quickly pull off. Okay, so I can see that there's some areas where I didn't get it on straight. So I think what I'm going to do is just go through with a little paintbrush and maybe I will just distress it a little bit. Really need to work on getting that piece on there straight though. As you are ready to remove your inlay, you want to re-wet it and then lightly pull it off. You can see that the paint is embedded. Lay them flat so you can use them again when they're dry. This is where we currently are. I have learned a few things. I need to go slower. I always have this problem when I'm decoupaging big pieces. This is a similar process. You don't want the wrinkles in it. Although it looked kind of cool, like it was cracking, it wasn't like enough to convince someone it was cracking. So these inlays are so cool. They are ink embedded into your paint. And I realized they blend really nicely with DIY paint. I just went with it and I thought, this is kind of cool. It's kind of like mist retreating. And this is the beautiful pastoral scene. So I'm happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the sides and apothecary. I will probably add a little bit of black wax at the end to tie it all together. But this is a good example of two things I learned. Number one, slow down when you're doing a new project. And number two, it's just paint and it can always be fixed. Now, worst case scenario, I had to paint over it again, but I really like this and I will definitely be using the Summer Villa again. It is really pretty. The sides will go fast. I'm just doing straight apothecary. Apothecary. I also already coated them with Salvation Solution, so I'm just going to put two coats on. Again, using my spray bottle makes that paint really flow. Don't forget to paint all sides of the legs. I can't tell you how many projects I have forgotten to do this and realize when I went to take a picture. Because I sanded all that veneer off the top, it is now going to be the perfect surface to stain it with DIY paint, dark and decrepit. This is an all natural stain. There is no smell. Use gloves and work quickly. I also like to use my spray bottle when I do this. It really helps it to flow. I like to apply the dark and decrepit with a staining sponge. I feel like I have a little more control and go slowly around the edges. Make sure that you have applied it evenly. It's very forgiving, but you do want to work quickly. Go over one more time just to smooth it out. Make sure you don't have any drips. I like to upcycle hardware that I have. This is what I'm using, but I am going to add some air dry clay using IOD molds to enhance it. What I'm doing is I'm gonna glue it on to the front of these Batman type handles and then wrap it around. I also used the lock and key mold because I wanted to make sure that hole was covered up and I'm going over it with a little bit of crinoline and a little bit of apothecary. I like to go over the top with Big Top. I'm also gonna use clear wax because it creates a watertight finish. Let's finish this up. The Big Top on the top is dry. This is pretty much dry. I had a heater on it, but it's still drying underneath, so I'm gonna be gentle as I'm going around it. But I think the paint really blended in well. So I'm going to use DIY Paint Clear Wax all over this piece. I'm also gonna put a coat on top because it makes it totally watertight. Anyone can spill anything on it. It'll just puddle up and be protected for years to come. I like to put DIY paint clear wax on with a natural brush. You can really work it in. You use less if you don't use a cloth. Don't worry if it looks like you've applied it uneven. It's the thickness of the paint, but 
once it dries and you buff it, you will not be able to tell. It's not going to absorb as well on the top because there is a coat of big top, but trust me, it will dry and it will make your piece super watertight protected. The wax is dry, time to buff. I like using these Buffy Buffs a lot brushes. They are pretty soft. They won't scratch the paint and they fit into most drill bits, saves your shoulders and your arms. And here it is all finished. If you had seen this thing in person, you would be amazed at the makeover. Here's the top. You can spill water on it and it'll just puddle up. If you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I have all the supplies available to you. We'll put the links below. I hope you will also check out my blog at redointeriors.com. And I hope I inspired you to try an IOD paint inlay and makeover your old junk. Thanks for watching.